Okay, so um, since we're a little delayed since we took that week break, um, this week we are doing Lab 11. And in Lab 11, what we're going to do is we're going to learn this merge statement. And you can see on my screen right here, we have a, an example of kind of what this merge statement would be. And we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, because in the last lab, as you guys know, we took our data from transaction upload and we put it into our, our actual tables. Now, when we did it in lab 10, we, we just used an insert statement and that was because all the data was new. And, and because the data is new, we're just gonna do an insert. Well, if we ran that again, if we ran that same insert again, it would duplicate the da data or as you, many of you saw, you actually get an error because the um, primary key has already been used or you know we're violating a unique constraint in many cases. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this merge statement because we wanna be able to do it over and over. So I guess the business logic is that we want to be able to take uh, data and continually reinsert it or update it. A, a good example is I guess in my, in my day job, we have Canvas as our LMS, and then we have a student information system where you know it has all the parent contact information and all that. Now in college, I guess very similarly, in college you guys have the same setup. You have the student information system, that's my BYU Idaho, and then we have Canvas. The difference is, is that in a K-12 environment, parents like to know where their kids are at grade-wise every day. So that way they can, you know, get on their kids' case if they are failing math or something like that. So what we do is we have to take all of our grades and put them into our student information system. Um, and even on top of that, what we actually do is we take all the categories, all those assignments and all the scores, and we bring that over every hour. Um, and it's not like it's always new data, right? Because we actually pull everything from Canvas and then we try to upsert it is what it's called but we do these merge statements to bring it all in. And if we've already brought it in, then it updates it. So that's kind of what we're gonna talk about here just a little bit. And so in this example, what we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using credits. So you can imagine if this is like a transcript type um, thing, which is very applicable to, to you guys as students. So imagine if we are importing into some national college database that keeps track of credits, total credits. Of, of students and here we have all of our Harry Potter students so we're going to pretend that this is in the magical world the Ministry of Magic wants to know how many credits each student has and we're going to update that or upsert it every every term now the first time let's say that uh, in, in fact let's say let's do this so if we look here we have Harry Potter Hermione Granger, Ronald Weasley, Neville Longbottom, and I have this one backward, let's fix that. Ronald Weasley. We have Ronald Weasley, Neville Longbottom, Luna Lovegood. Now you'll notice that over here we have Harry, and he's over, so he's in both, Hermione's in both, and Neville Longbottom's in both, but Luna Lovegood is only over here, and we have George and Fred Weasley who are only on the importing table. So basically what we're assuming is this, is that um, our existing target is the Ministry of Magic, right? And that's the data they already have. So for whatever reason, they don't have Fred and George Weasley. They, they skipped, right? We, we just never inserted them or anything. So, so they're new. Um, and Luna Lovegood, well, we're missing her from here, which is fine. Um, but we're going to look at how that affects us because basically what we're going to be doing is is upserting this meaning that we're going to do different things based on if the data matches or not so when we run this merge statement which we'll we'll go into more detail here in a second various things are going to happen so if we look at this we say we are merging existing as target so this is our target and using importing as source so basically what we're doing is we're taking source or our importing and we're gonna to try to take all this data and merge it into this data. 
And then we tell what we want to match on. And this is the most important part. This is how we match. So we're going to match on person ID. So then we're going to run through this logic. So we're matching on person ID. So let's, uh, we're going to hit our first record here on importing source. And we're going to say, okay, we're going to do a join on person ID, person ID. Okay, yep, there's a match. So those two records match. And then we're going to hit this and we're going to say when matched, then update. So here you can see that the action taken is an update. And what do we do to update? Well, we set the, the credits from target equal to, so we're going to take his credits here and we're going to set it equal to the credits from source. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to change this to 16 like we did right here. Right, so that way, instead of doing a whole new row for Harry Potter, we're gonna just update the information. Right, so it's gonna do that. Let's walk through one more. So Hermione Granger, 1002, 1002, we have a match. And when it matches, we're gonna update and we're gonna set the target credits equal to, so the target credits equal to source stock credits. So we're gonna take the 22 and it's gonna become the new credit in the target. Now let's look at another one. So Ronald Weasley, you'll notice that he's only here. He doesn't have a record here. So when we do our join, it's actually just not going to do anything to him. We could add a row and, and I don't want to get too deep into this because it actually isn't uh, discussed pretty much anywhere in the course, but we can actually add a row to say if it exists in target. So for example, if you're Ronald Weasley and you're over here, but not here, we could delete this row. And I guess a good example of that is, is if we were going to take the like grades, for example, let's say that in my scenario where, you know, it's high school, let's say a teacher puts out an assignment and it sinks. And then let's say later they decide, oh, you know what, that assignment was just, it was bad or something. We want to delete that. So we delete that score for everybody. Well, when we go to do that, that's what we do in our database with our merge is we say if it's over here in the target, but not in the source, delete it because we're always going to have a complete list inside of here. And then Robert asked a good question. Could that update, so this update in when matched, be set to a sum function? And the answer is yes, it could be set to a sum function. So we, we, could, we can pretty much do whatever we want here because it's just an update statement. So we can say update set target dot credits equal to source dot credits plus target dot credits. So we could take the sum of those. So we could just, let's say we were just getting a term by term thing. We could merge the term data into the existing and sum the credits. So good question. We could do that if we wanted to. The only problem with that, you know, and this all depends on your, your logic as far as your business rules. But, you know, in this scenario, if let's say that we made a mistake and let's say Harry Potter was, or let's use a better example. Let's say George Weasley was caught cheating and he lost three credits. If we were using a sum function, that wouldn't work. And so basically by doing it this way, our business logic dictates that if the school makes any changes, we're going to respect those changes. But, you know, like I said, it all depends on the business logic. If, if you wanted to do a term by term, they could do that as well. All right, so let's get down to one that's new. So when we hit George Weasley, you'll notice that, oh, there's no match over here, right? So when not matched, then, and then this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna insert the person ID, the first name, last name, and credits. Person ID, first name, last name, credits. And we're gonna take the source person ID, the source first name, the source last name, and the source credits. And you'll notice here, we get this insert with his new data. So then after the merge, George Weasley would have a record inside the existing table. And same thing with for Fred. Does that kind of make sense to everybody? The, like kind of the logic there, what's going on? Yep. Perfect. 
you know, uh, it's funny because merges are one of those things that it's, uh, it's actually kind of complicated, but it's something that we kind of use logically all the time. You can imagine like uh, contacts, right? You know, like, oh, every time you update someone's, someone's contact information, you know, how nice would it be if you could just take someone's contact, all your people's contacts and just merge them with your, your contact books you and change it, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's a pretty common problem, you know, especially when you dive into the world of data. This is a problem that if you know how to do this, then you can solve a lot of problems for people because it it's part of uh, uh, an ETL workflow. So if you don't know what ETL is, uh, since we're learning about databases, it's probably one of the most popular um, things in databases. Um, ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. Um, and basically what that means is you're taking uh, databases from all these different applications, right? You know, and this one only has two, but basically we have application A and application B. And we're gonna take all that data and extract it. So that's where we write our queries. We pull it down and then we transform it if needed. And then we load it up. So that's kind of what we're doing here is, is we, are do, we are now handling the load portion of this. Now, luckily for us, since we're kind of all in the same database, but we're kind of simulating because transaction upload is technically one of these applications, right? So you can imagine that uh, the database A is our point of sale system. And we didn't write the extract, but the result of the extract is that transaction upload CSV file that we built as an external table. Well, the transforming of it was kind of what we're doing while we load it. Because you guys wrote the queries um, in lab 10 to actually do all the transformation. And, you know, and it talked about how you need to map through the common lookup table. You guys... Are you, you guys following how the, um, you know, the way we mapped through transaction up, or sorry, the way we mapped through common lookup to transform our data from, um, you know, whatever it was in transaction upload, like three day rental, we need to get that to turn into the common lookup ID. So we transform that data and now we're at the load portion of it. So we actually kind of mix the transform and load portions of all this together but it doesn't matter. Um, it's still all there. So you guys just are, you didn't know it, but you were doing ETL this whole time. Usually ETL in the transform stage is actually done with a third party, uh, with a third language like Python or something like that. It can be done with SQL, um, but it, it can happen with SQL. So then like, that's what we're going to do is we are, we're going to play, um, with SQL and do the tran the transformation with with our SQL, which you guys wrote already. So, um, let's show you a little bit about how that's actually going to work in your lab. Because the nice thing is, you've actually done all the work. <coughs> this is probably one of the easiest labs of the term because you've already did the hard stuff. If you're done with Lab Ten, so let's pull it up. All right, so if I was going to start with my lab 11, step one, let me pull up the instructions here. Sorry, my voice is starting to go because as you guys all know, working from home, um, as everyone's doing, just takes three times the amount of communication as it normally does, so. Um, yeah, been talking all day. All right, so step one, it says we're going to use the query we developed in lab 10 to insert rec records into the rental table. Now, one important thing, 
is that as we're as we're setting up our lab 11 we are no longer going to call you know normally what we do is we call a lab the previous lab so normally you would say you know at uh, you know dot 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 you would do apply oracle lab I'll, i'm skipping that for the sake of time so know that you would put the full path there you would do something like this right well, we're actually going to skip calling lab 10 because lab 10 was just all about building these, these queries. And if we run lab 10, we're going to get weird things when we do this one. So we're going to just run lab nine. And that way, because lab 10 does what lab 11 is going to do, just not near as good. It only works one time. So we're going we're gonna to use just lab 11. So we're going to skip straight to lab nine. So make sure at the top of your lab 11, it should already be there that you call lab nine instead of lab 10. But just so you know, and you see it, don't, don't worry too much because that's what we're gonna be doing. All right, so step one, we're gonna write our merge statement that uses the query we developed in lab 10. So we're gonna take and copy this. They actually already give you kind of the little frame here. So we're gonna take and we're gonna copy this right in here. And what's nice is all we, all we have to do and I pulled up mine because I have a, you know, I finished mine. Um, we're going to take this and we're going to grab our query from the previous lab. And we are going to put it inside of those parentheses. And just so you know, so what I like to do is I like to take and I actually like when I'm doing bigger stuff like this, I, I like to put a little gap there. Um, just so the query is all kind of isolated. So you just put your query there, make sure it doesn't have a semicolon and you'll just put it between those two parentheses. Now our query, this table is now called source. So when, when we say source, know that we're talking about the results from our query like we got in lab 10. And when we talk about target, know that we're talking about rental, the table we're putting into. We call it target because that's where we want to end up. So source is the data we're inserting and target is the alias that we're putting into. And we're matching on target.rentalid equals source.rentalid. And here we have one match. Then we're going to update the last updated by with the new one. So if we update something, it's going to always show the newest update date and update by. Now we don't have anything in here that we necessarily need to update. So we're gonna leave this update statement just like that. Basically, it's just gonna show that, you know what, we, we checked for an update. It's not actually gonna update anything of use. But the real magic happens here when we do our inserts. Right now, I'm not going to do all this for you because, like I said, this lab is really, really, really simple. So, on this insert values here, um, you'll notice that we just go through rental. So, if it were me, I would describe rental and you can see the order here. So, um, you know, we're inserting rental ID. And then here we would start to put our data. So source dot and let's put um, our customer ID and we know that that's contact ID. Basically it kind of just goes in the same order we have here because this is our source data. So we can just go straight through this. Oh, and uh, you'll want to use the query that does not do the insert, but the one by itself. Cause you'll notice that on this one, we don't have like the, rental i the the next vowel we're not we're not doing the insert up here it's just the query port part of it so we get the contact id because that's the customer id and then we would get something like the source dot checkout date source dot return date make sure those line up check out the return date and then we would have our created by Creation date and update by uh, 
last update date. So like that, it would be like that. And that's actually step one. So you guys talk me into it. I, I helped you out with step one. But now you can see a working example because this, this is actually how it's gonna, gonna work. Does this kind of make sense to everybody? I hope the example before makes it so when you see this, it's just like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. But if it doesn't, that's fine. Let me know and we can uh, try some more. Does it not make sense to anybody? Anyone questionable? Alrighty, well, um, okay. And, and like I said, it, it's actually, you guys already did the hard part. And so really this is just a kind of just like a really, it looks complicated, but it's just a logic piece, right? Basically what we're doing here is we're, we're building a join, a, a right join to be exact. We're, we're building a right join from target to, to source, right? Because we're going to take everything we have in rental and we're going to take everything we have in our select statement here. And we're going to try to match them up based on rental ID. And then all we do is we run this, this if statement, right? And we say, look, if it matches, do this. If it doesn't match, do this. And then if it matches, well, we don't want to, if it matches, we just want to update some information, right? Because we don't want to, we don't want to insert duplicate data. If it matches, you know, if, if it's the same time that Harry rented Hunt for the Red October on April 4th, um, you know, we don't want to duplicate that record. And so what do we do? Well, we just update some data. Now, this is a bad example because we don't actually update anything. But like, let's say, for example, that we were going to um, update maybe price like the amount that they paid maybe they got you know i don't know um and for all these examples we're just doing the last update by last updated date those are the only things we're actually going to update um but yeah it's just a, a very simple we do a join if there's a match then we do some logic if it matches we run this if it doesn't match we run this and in this case, if it matches, we want to update. If it doesn't match, it's a new row and we want to insert. it. So you can kind of take this piece by piece and it's stuff we've already done quite a bit. So this is the only part that's new, right? But, but really it's not too crazy because we've done joins and it's, it is join syntax, basically just written a little different. So we say merge into rental. We give it an alias called target. And then we say using, and then we write this subquery and call it a source. So we make a little temp table called source. So just like we were doing before, um, we have our two tables and we join. So almost imagine like a, a join on, and then we just specify how we want to join those, what we want to match on. And then we, so that that's our join piece. So once you have that figured out, then it's just a matter of, you know, what do I want to do if they match? Well, I want to update it. Well, what information do I want to update? Right now for all of these steps, the update is only last update by last update date. So you can actually on every one of them and it might even give them to you. Let's check. Let's check. Yep. It actually gives them to you. So you actually don't have to, um, you don't have to do anything too crazy. All right, was as far as that, because they're all there for you. So really all you have to do is just paste in your, your query and then write the insert statement. So, so you should be able to get it because basically all you're gonna do is go here, get all the names, put them in order so they insert, you know, we've written a lot of insert statements. So you should just be able to write that insert statement. So anyways, we're gonna pretend that we did this, all these steps. So there was step one. We're gonna pretend we did step two and step three, right? Because step two and three are doing the same thing just with those two other ones. We're gonna insert into rental item, 
do our merge to rental item, then we're gonna do our merge into transaction. So nothing too crazy. When we get down to step four though, we're gonna do something a little bit different because what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of put this all together and we're going to put it into our own procedure so that instead of having to run this file or whatever, whenever we want to upload the new data, we can just call a function or a procedure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this code right here and we're gonna put it here. Now what's nice is all we have to do for this step is take our merge statement that we already wrote and put it in the right spot. Just like that. And then you do the same thing with your rental item and transaction one and then you're then you're go you're good for that. And then you can test it just like we've done before. We did this in lab uh, six or seven with the uh, account stuff. We say upload transaction, we call it like that. Because this is gonna build it and then this is gonna run it. And then from there it should, should do your stuff. So, so that's pretty easy. The, for the most part up to there is almost just a exercise and copy your work that you did from the last lab, put it here, understand how it works in the merge statement. You know, it's important to understand what you're doing. Um, but other than that, it's there. Now there is a, st a step five in, in lab 11. And, and it's, it's a little bit of a tricky one, but I kind of want you guys to try it. So this is a challenge one. I, I've always looked at this, this step as a, more of a challenge. So if it's not 100% accurate, no problem, because all it is is a query. We're not going to use this in any way. It's just a query just to, to write a query. So, um, but you get to use some new functions and it talks about those. So I'm not going to go too much into it, but um, if you guys want to try doing this one, just know that I pretty much, if you, if you attempt it, give it a good effort. Um, I give you your points. Um, and I'm also there to help a lot on Slack. I'm very forthcoming with clues. So I, I kind of want you guys to, to try this as a little exercise, a little exercise in uh, critical thinking, some problem solving, cause that that's important. That's pretty much any technology job. That's, that's what you're going to be doing. You'll spend a lot of time on Google, um, a lot of time pulling your hair out. Um, but the good thing is, is that, you know, you have me to ask for help, just like you do in the real world. You know, most time you'll have a mentor. Um, most time you have Google, all that kind of stuff. So, so I want you guys to try this one um, because the rest of this lab is really easy. So um, anyways, does that sound good to everybody? Does everything make sense so far? Perfect. Yep, going to be a nice quick lab, which is good considering that, uh, you know, I feel like things have slowed down a little bit as far as the craziness of what's happening, but it's still a little shaky. So um, hopefully this is kind of a nice quick lab for you guys. Um, and like I said, I want step five to, to be fun and not like a pressure thing. You know, by all means, if you're like me and you're crazy OCD and, you know, don't let it overwhelm your life, but, but, you know, solve it if, if you can, if you have the time. But also I don't want it to be like this pressure thing to saying like, oh, I'm not gonna get my points unless I figure this out. So, you know, just give it your best shot. If you have any questions, ask for help. Um, you know, work together as a group to solve each little problem because this one's kind of a little bit. And I know some people have actually already gotten to here. So, um, you know, there's probably people that have already kind of done this a little bit and they might be able to help you too so anyways that's the lab so it's not too too terribly crazy um does anyone else have any questions about the lab go 
on the wand. One quick question. Yep. Um, when I was doing mine, when I was working on it, I have a where in my query from lab 10 that seemed to work there and it, it ended up working, but it was telling me that my rows weren't stable. Oh is yeah. Where thing is, should so, I get that where out? No. Um, cause it's actually not the where if, if it says your rows are unstable and I'm actually really glad you brought this up. If it says your rows are unstable, it means that you have a duplicate row in your, in your source. Um, so, ah. so what I would do is I would check to make sure you have select distinct in there because that will make okay. it so you get a stable set of rows. Okay. Thank you. If you can't solve it though, uh, let me know on Slack. Okay. Great question. Yeah, because the people will come across that. If you get an unstable set of rows, check uh, to make sure you don't have any duplicates and check that if you need the select distinct, that you have the select distinct up there. Or just try adding distinct. I think they should all have distinct except for, um, I believe. There was one that didn't have distinct, right? I think rental item. Well, rental you need distinct, rental item does not, and actually transaction doesn't either. So yeah, try that. And if that doesn't work, then there, there may be something else going on with, with some of the joins or something. Okay, thanks. Yep. Good question though, because th there will be people that come across that. And, and, if, and if it's on one of those that don't have the distinct clause in it, so if it's, if it's rental item or transaction that you're getting that error, then we need to start looking at either, uh, and, and in fact, I actually don't have a where clause in, in mine. You can do it two ways though, because I like to put my stuff in joins. Um, and so it just depends, but we, we might want to just check and make sure all your joins are correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, oh, go ahead. Fine. Okay. Um, will it hurt to have distinct in it, even if it's not needed? Actually, in this case, it probably will not hurt. So at the very least, if you wanted to, you could try throwing in a distinct clause. Um, because all it's going to do is return a unique set of rows. So the distinct, even if it's not technically needed, may solve the problem naturally because what we might be doing is we might just be missing one join, like one where clause, one join condition that filters out duplicates. Um, and so, but depending on what that data is that is causing those rows to duplicate, duplicate, um, it may be a problem or it may not. So yeah, if, and if you got all the data that look correct, the distinct might, might just fix the problem. Good question. All right. Um, so since no one else has any questions real quick, I just wanted to let you know that uh, um, after lab 11, um, we're actually going to um, jump to, because lab 12 is now not required, we're going to jump into lab 13 and 14. And what I want to try to do this term is I'm going to, you can do the instructions as is um, that's on the website. That, that's kind of fine. I'll take those as points. Um, but I'm also working on another um, tutorial uh, on how to set up your own web server, kind of like how we did that one time. I've been kind of working on it and, and it's just about ready to go. So the other, for lab 13 and 14, um, I'd, if you want to do the official lab, you can do those. Otherwise, if you want to try a little bit more of a challenge following this tutorial, we're going to set up a server in like VirtualBox and set up our own kind of LAMP stack and kind of build our own little data project. So I'll accept both. So if you want to work ahead, just do the official one. If not, uh, wait till next week and there should be some, some resources for lab 13 and then lab 14 will come shortly thereafter. So yeah, um, because after, you know, that is one thing 
um, some of the software is a little dated like that they have you do in lab 14. Um, so I kind of wanted to do something that's a little bit more modern um, and let you guys see. And the other nice thing is the whole purpose of those labs is to show you how you can go from um, nothing to a full functioning server. So you can start kind of maybe building some of your own stuff, get some experience that way. So that's kind of my goal. Um, so yeah, just those housekeeping items. Um, if anyone has any um, problems uh, as far as, if you know, if you've had an extra, a big life event happen, you know, if, if there's something going on in your life and you need some extra time on something or something, let me know because we are getting down to crunch time. Um, and also if you have missing labs, uh, please start thinking about getting those in because I haven't set a deadline yet, but I normally do. Um, I'm still kind of waiting because, you know, all this kind of weird stuff happens. So um, I haven't set a date yet, but at some point I do have to quit taking late uh, work um, so I can get everything done and turned in by my deadline. So, so if you do have missing labs, we're at that point now where, um, you know, we need to start thinking about it. So that's all I have. So a nice short meeting. Um, but if anyone or no one else has any questions, we'll, we'll call that a day. Thank you. Yep, thank you.